<laughs> Very good. <laughs> that is really <laughs> dog in box. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> G'day and welcome back to the channel. We're starting off with a flashback question. We have a sign that says, if you can't see my mirrors, I can't see you. Question is, multiple choice from a sample exam from Nessa. Which of the following statements is logically equivalent to the statement on the sign? Hit pause and see which one of these four you would be going for. Okay, so me personally, when I see the words logically equivalent, that reminds me that in our last video, we said that a statement is logically equivalent to its contrapositive. So essentially what this question could be asking is, which of these four is the contrapositive of our statement? If you can't see my mirrors, I can't see you. That means if I can see you, then you can see my mirrors, which is option B. So option B is our contrapositive statement and a contrapositive and original statement are always logically equivalent. If one is true, then so is the other. Okay, for today's lesson, we are looking at proof by contradiction and also a quick look at, a, at counter examples and what they are. Okay, starting off with some counter examples. Here are some statements that we are gonna show are false by just proving that there is at least one example where the statement is not true. So for example, the first one is saying that for all real numbers, so for all x element of R, uh, the square root of x squared is equal to x. So we're trying to find an example of a number where that isn't true. We're trying to find a real number where that isn't true. So we have shown that the statement is not true for all real numbers. Okay, so a square root and a square do often um, counteract each other, I suppose, except when you look at negative numbers. So for example, if we did the square root of minus two squared, inside we would have the square root of four, which is equal to positive two. Okay, so we have a number, we're squaring it and then square rooting it, and we are not getting back to where we started. So any, uh, any negative number is not gonna be true for this statement, so this is not true for all real numbers. There is our counter example. For question B, we have if n squared is divisible by four, then n is also divisible by four. So can you think of a square number that is a multiple of four, and then if you take the square root, you get something that is not a multiple of four. There's a few examples. The first one that came to my head is 10 squared is equal to 100, which is four lots of 24. So 10 squared is divisible by four. However, 10 is not divisible by four. So there is an example that does not meet the criteria of the question. So the statement must not be true for all n. And for the third one, we have for all integers, n squared plus n plus one is a prime number. Okay, first one I checked that didn't work was the integer four. So if we do four squared plus four plus one, we get 21. Even though it's an odd number, it is not prime because it is three times seven. So there is our counter, counter example. So this statement is not true for all integers. Here is an example of an HSC question that involves counter examples. So our proposition is uh, if two to the power of n minus one is not prime, AKA composite usually, uh, then n is not prime. So this is from the 2020 exam, a band three question. So have a think about which one of these four examples, which are all true, uh, disproves this statement. Okay, so the key to this question is we're trying to find an example where the first half of the statement works so the first half is true, but then the second half is not true. Kind of like the same logic as a negation, okay? So we're trying to find um, two to the power of n minus one being composite, but then the power of n needs to be prime. As Soon as we recognize that, we can look at option D where we have two to the 11 minus one is divisible by 23. So the first part is true. Two to the n minus one is not prime. However, n is not prime. Our power of n is 11, so it is prime. So D is the example where the setup of the question works, but the payoff does not work. So it's an example that disproves this statement and that is our counter example. Okay, next part of this lesson is gonna be called um, proof by contradiction. So sometimes um, the simplest or maybe the cleverest way to prove a statement is to show that the negation is false, okay? If a statement's negation is false, that must mean that the original statement is true. Okay, this process is called proof by contradiction. 
Let's have a look at an example of how we could use proof by contradiction. We are going to start off by a little setup proof. We're going to prove that if n squared is an even number, then n is also even. This fact is going to be important in proving that root 2 is an irrational number using contradiction. Okay, so for part A, we're going to do a quick contrapositive proof similar to our last video. So we're going to write a contrapositive statement, which is that if n is odd, then n squared is also odd. So we'll write n as 2 times something plus 1, so it's in the form of an odd number. Then if we square this expression, we'll get 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. We can factor a 2 out of the front two terms, and now we have 2 times something plus 1. So we have shown that n squared is an odd number. Because our contrapositive has been shown to be true, the original statement must also be true. So if n squared is an even number, then n is also even. All right, now we're going to use that fact in part B where we are proving that root two is an irrational number and we are using contradiction. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we are going to write down the negation, which is that root two is a rational number. Okay, so we're going to assume that root two is irrational and we're gonna try and show that that makes no sense. Okay, so here's how I'm gonna write root two being a rational number. I'm gonna say there exists two integers a and b such that root two is equal to a over b. Okay, this is the definition of a rational number. It means it can be written as a fraction using whole numbers. Okay, and a, b, we are gonna say are co-prime. This means that a and b have no common factors. So the fraction a over b has already been simplified. Okay, so root two expressed as a simplified fraction. Now our goal is to show that this doesn't work. So here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna square both sides of this expression. So we get two is equal to a squared over b squared. Now, if we multiply the b squared across, we get 2b squared is equal to a squared. What this tells us is that a squared is equal to 2 times something, so a squared must be an even number. As we proved in the part a contrapositive of this question, if a squared is even, this implies that the square root, which is a, is also an even number. Okay? This is an assumption we're gonna be making a few times today. Um, we've already proved it once, but this property works uh, for any prime number. So if a squared is divisible by two, then a is also divisible by two. Uh, later on, we'll be doing this with other numbers. Okay, so if a is even, it means that a is equal to two times something, where the something is an integer. Now we're going to take this line here, two b squared equals a squared, and we're going to replace the a with a two k. So we have 2b squared is equal to 2k all squared. This gets us 2b squared is equal to 4k squared. And now we're going to divide both sides of this expression by 2. So we have b squared is equal to 2 times k squared. So this tells us that uh, the b squared is equal to 2 times something, which means that b squared must be an even number. This once again implies that the square root, which is b, is also going to be an even number. Now, we have arrived at a contradiction because we said that root two was equal to a over b, where a and b was a simplified fraction with no um, shared factors. However, we have shown that a and b are both even, which means that they are not co-prime. They have a common factor of two. Okay, so when we get to this point, we say, hang on, that didn't work. So we have contradicted ourselves. The reason we have made a contradiction is because our statement in blue is not true. Okay, which means that if this is false, the original statement, which was that root two is an irrational number, this must indeed be true. Okay, so we've taken the negation, we've shown that this causes a contradiction, so it can't be true, which means the original statement must be true. So our assumption was false, therefore root two is irrational. Okay, let's run through another example to try and get a bit more confident with this idea of proving by contradiction. So for this next one, we're gonna start off by proving that root five is irrational. Okay, starting off with the same method as the last time, we're gonna start by assuming that root five is rational. So we're gonna write it in this form, where we have root five is equal to a over b, where a and b are integers and they are co-prime, so they have no common factors. Okay, now let's see if we can disprove this fact. So let's start off by once again, squaring both sides of the equality. So we have five equal to a squared over b squared. Multiplying the b squared across, we get a squared is equal to five times b squared. Now, what this tells us is that a squared is a multiple of five because a squared is five times something. 
Okay, like last time we had if a squared was even, then the square root, which was a, is also even. This also works with five because five is a prime number. Okay, so if a square number is divisible by five, then the square root is also divisible by five. Okay, you don't need to prove that. You are allowed to assume that in your contradiction proof. Otherwise, this would take us all day. Okay, so a squared divisible by five implies that a is divisible by five. So we'll write a as five times an integer. Now we'll substitute this into this second line here and we'll have 5b squared equal to 5k all squared, which turns into 25k squared. Okay, now dividing both sides by 5, we get b squared equal to 5k squared. And now this in turn tells us that b squared is a multiple of 5. Okay, so if b squared is divisible by 5, as we said over here, this implies that b is also divisible by 5. And here we have our contradiction. We have shown that if root 5 is equal to a over b, then a and b are both divisible by 5. This is contradictory to what we said in the first line where we declared that a and b were co-prime, so a over b was a simplified fraction. So because we have contradicted ourselves, this blue line must be incorrect, and therefore uh, root 5 is rational, it must not be true, therefore root 5 is irrational because our assumption was false. Okay, now let's use that to explain why the square root of 80 is also irrational. Okay, this is a pretty quick proof. We're just going to write root 80 as a simplified third. So we're going to split it up as root 5 times root 16. Of course, root 16 is 4, so, so root 80 is just 4 root 5. Now in part A, we just proved that the square root of 5 is an irrational number. So it's pretty logical to say that 4 times the square root of 5 is also irrational. Okay, if you multiply an irrational number by a whole number, you get a result that is also irrational. And there is our proof. Okay, so the two main types of questions we use contradiction proofs are, are of course square roots, as we just saw, and we also like to use them for log rhythms like this, okay? We're going to prove that log base 2 of 5 is an irrational number. Okay, starting off the same way by declaring that log base 2 of 5 is rational, and we're going to try and show that that makes no sense. So we're going to write log base 2 of 5 equal to a fraction of two integers that are co-prime with no common factors. Okay, now our goal is to show that this equation does not work. So what we're going to do is we're going to write it as an exponential equation rather than a logarithmic equation by starting with 2. So we have 2 to the power of a over b is equal to 5. Okay, so we've translated the equation. What we'll now do is raise both sides of the equation to the power of b. So on the left-hand side, our indices multiply through the brackets and we have a over b times b gives us just a. So we end up with 2 to the power of a is equal to 5 to the power of b. Now, this right away is already a contradiction. There is no number that could um, simultaneously be a power of 2 and a power of 5. This is because every um, known number in existence has a unique prime factorization. Okay, so you couldn't write a number as a product of 2s while also writing it as a product of 5. So when we get to this line, we can say that makes no sense because every number has a unique prime factorization. So we couldn't have these two giving us the same answer. Therefore, this is a contradiction because our assumption was false. Therefore, log base 2 of 5 must be an irrational number. All right, cool. Uh, we're going to try that again with slightly harder numbers. So that one was easy because 2 and 5 were prime numbers. So it was pretty quick to get a contradiction. With this one, we have two composite numbers, 4 and 12. So I've got to be a little bit more sneaky and a bit more clever. The setup is the exact same. We're starting off by assuming that log base 4 of 12 is a rational number. So we're going to have log base 4 of 12 equal to a over b once again. Okay, now just like last time, we're going to translate this into an exponential equation. So we'll have 4 to the power of a over b is equal to 12. Okay, there's our equation. Once again, raising both sides to the power of b. On the left will give us 4 to the a, and on the right will give us 12 to the power of b. Now, we need to show that this doesn't make sense, and here's how we're going to do it. We're going to write the right-hand side as 12 to the 1 multiplied by 12 to the b minus 1. Okay, so we're splitting this into two separate powers. We've got a 12 to the 1 and a 12 to the b minus 1. All right, now we have a constant 12 at the front. We're going to write this 12 as 3 times 4. Okay, so we have 
3 times 4 times 12 to the b minus 1. Now, the reason we have written the right-hand side like this is because now on the left, we have 4 to the a is equal to 3 times something. So what we've shown is that uh, 3 is a factor of 4 to the power of a. Logically, this must mean that 3 is also a factor of 4, which is not true. 3 is not a factor of 4. So because 3 is not a factor of 4, it means that 3 is not a factor of 4 to the power of a, which means this statement here is a contradiction, which means our original blue statement must be incorrect. Therefore, log base 4 of 12 is not rational, so it is an irrational number. That's what this sentence here says. Log base 4 of 12, not an element of the rational number set. So there you go, pretty sneaky, but sometimes you gotta to go to extra steps to make sure you have a statement that is um, simpler to say, or, or give reasons, coherent reasons, why it doesn't make sense. That's the goal here. Okay, uh, moving on to a slightly tough one, I suppose. We have, so the question has told us that root six is an irrational number. That's good to know. We don't have to prove that, but if we needed to, we could. We've already done that twice today. Anyway, moving on show that root two plus root three is also irrational. Okay, we're using a contradiction proof. So we're starting off by stating the opposite. So we're going to assume that root two plus root three is a rational number. So we do our usual spiel. So root two plus root three must be equal to a fraction of integers with no common factors. All right, now, as we always do, we're going to square both sides of this equality. So on the left-hand side, if we use a perfect square expansion, we'll have two plus two times root six plus root three. Over on the right, we have a squared plus b squared. Now, what we're gonna do for this one, it's a bit different. We are going to use the fact that the question told us root six is an irrational number. That means we shouldn't be able to write root six as a fraction of two whole numbers. So if we can rearrange this equation to have root six as the subject and having the other side being a rational fraction, that's gonna be our contradiction, okay? That's our goal for this one. So what we'll do is we'll subtract the two and the three across the other side. So we'll have a squared over b squared minus five. Now we're going to combine the right-hand side as one fraction. So I'm gonna think of this five as five times b squared over b squared. So if I combine these two terms together, I'll have a squared minus five b squared over b squared, okay? Now over the right hand side, we have a fraction. I'm going to divide both sides by two. So we get root six equals a squared minus five b squared over two b squared. Now because a, b, two, and five are all just numbers, whole numbers in fact, on the top we have a whole number and on the bottom we have a whole number. So we have expressed root six as a fraction of two whole numbers. So we've shown that root six is rational. That, however, is a contradiction to the information in the question. The question said root six is irrational. So we have formed a contradiction, which means that none of this must be true because our assumption was false. Therefore, root two plus root three must be an irrational number. All right, cool beans. We're finishing off with an HSC style question. This was in the sample exam published by Nessa in 2020. So this is similar to HSC level questions. We have alpha is equal to square root of 4n minus 2, where n is a fixed positive integer. Uh, prove that uh, alpha is irrational. So we're just going to try and show that this is rational using a contradiction proof. If you're feeling confident with the examples in this video so far, by all means, pause and see if you can start this one off by yourself. There's a little bit of a trick towards the end, but um, the setup is the exact same as we've already done today. All right, speaking of, here's our setup. We're going to assume the uh, the opposite. So we're going to assume root 4n minus 2 is a rational number. So we're going to write it as a fraction of two integers. And of course, a and b are co-prime with no common factors. Okay, once again, we're going to square both sides of this equality. So we have 4n minus 2 is equal to a squared over b squared. Now, multiplying the b squared across the left-hand side, and then what we're going to do is we're going to factor the two out of this 4n minus two. So we have two outside of b squared times 2n minus one. All right, sweet. Now what, what this tells us is that a squared is equal to two times something. So we've shown once again that a squared is an even number. Okay, as we stated before, if a squared is even, then the square root a will also be even. This means we can write the right-hand side, we can write a as 2k, 
So if we square that, we'll get 4k squared. Okay, now we're going to divide both sides of the equality by 2. So we have b squared times 2n minus 1 is equal to 2k squared. Okay, now remember we're trying to contradict ourselves. So really our goal here is to show that b is an even number because we have shown that a is an even number and they can't both be even because they are co-prime. So let's have a look at this line here and think about how we can show that b must be an even number. Well, on the right hand side, we have two times k squared. So the right hand side is clearly even. We have b squared multiplied by two n minus one. As we've explored many times in this course already, we know that two n minus one is odd. So we have something times an odd number that gives us an answer, which is even. If you think around for a few examples in your head of odd and even numbers, you'll realize that the only way this works, something times odd equals even, that only works if this b squared is also even, okay? Like for example, we had two times three, we had even times odd. The answer would be six, which is even, okay? So we're saying to ourselves, since two n minus one is odd and two k squared is even, therefore b squared must be even. And this tells us that, like we said before, the square root b must also be even. Okay, there's the logic there, and there is our contradiction. We have a is even and b is even, so we have, um, they both have a factor of two, which contradicts our statement because our assumption was incorrect. Therefore, square root 4n minus two must be an irrational number. All right, sweet, that will do it for today's video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one where we're gonna do some inequalities. Thanks for watching, see you later.